Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Chinese scallion pancakes. That's right, I have to admit I was pretty confused the first time I had this, since it was nothing like any pancake I'd ever had before. The outside was kind of crispy and crusty, and while layered, the inside was kind of dense and a little bit oily, and I wasn't exactly sure if I liked it or not, but I also couldn't stop eating it. But anyway, over the years, I came to appreciate this for what it is, a very interesting, very enjoyable, and extremely fun to make flatbread. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our extremely simple dough, which is going to start with some bread flour, to which we're going to add some salt, and then what we're going to do is make a well in the middle, and we'll go ahead and pour in some very hot but not quite boiling water, and we'll use our wooden spoon to mix this together until it forms a shaggy dough. And as you'll notice, we had way more water than would fit in that depression we made. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we made that well for nothing. But anyway, like I said, we'll give that a mix with our wooden spoon until everything comes together and sort of looks like this and forms what I've already referred to as a shaggy dough. And once it reaches that point, as usual, what we'll do is transfer this onto our work surface, which as you can see has been lightly dusted with flour. And we'll give it a quick but important kneading until we formed a very sticky but relatively smooth and elastic ball of dough. And of course, if you need to sprinkle a little bit of flour onto your fingers or some more onto the surface, go ahead. But try to be careful not to add too much. All right, I know sticky doughs are annoying to work with, but if you add too much flour to make it easier, you're not gonna get as good of a texture later. So we're just gonna use the bare minimum. And after a couple minutes of working that over, you should end up with something that looks like this. And then what we'll do is wrap this up and ideally leave it overnight in the fridge before we use it. Although I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to use the shortcut method of just leave it on the counter for a couple hours. And we'll talk about this on the blog, but both systems will work. So we'll go ahead and wrap that in plastic and let that dough rest. And while it does, we'll head to the stove to make one more key element. And that's going to be an oil flour mixture we use to paint the dough before we roll it up. So into this pan, we're going to add some vegetable oil as well as some sesame oil. And then just a little bit of flour. And what we'll do is mix that together over medium heat. And we'll wait for that stuff to start bubbling. And if you're thinking to yourself, isn't this sort of a roux? And what is the Chinese word for roux? Well, I guess it sort of is, even though we're not going to use this to thicken a sauce. And I do not know the Chinese word for roux. Although, thanks to the Simpsons, I do know they have the same word for crisis as opportunity. Which, of course, is Christatunity. But anyway, I've killed enough time, and this is all stirred together. And then all we're going to do is let this cook on medium until it starts to bubble. At which point we're going to cook it for exactly one minute more. And that's it. We'll simply turn off the heat and let that cool down to room temp. And once it is cool, what we'll do is grab a brush and we'll use that to brush it onto our dough once rolled. And then besides the dough and this oil mixture, the only other major component is of course the scallions, or as they're more commonly referred to in these parts, green onions. And I tend to use mostly the green parts, but if you want, you can use the lighter parts as well. And then once we have everything prepped, assuming our dough is rested long enough, we'll go ahead and unwrap it and I'm gonna go ahead and cut mine in half because this recipe makes two pancakes. And what we'll do is take that half and go ahead and roll it out as shown into sort of a tube shape like this. And again, just like when we made the dough, we wanna use the minimum amount of flour. And then what we'll do once that tube's been formed is kind of press it down with our fingers before switching over to the rolling pin. And then what we're gonna to attempt to do is roll this out to about an eighth of an inch thick while at the same time achieving some sort of rectangular shape or maybe one of those oval rectangles that we like to call a rectoval. And about halfway through, I like to flip that over and apply a little more flour. And then we will complete the rolling process. And I probably err on the side of going too thin versus too thick. Since the thinner we roll this at this point, the more layers our finished pancake's gonna have. So keep that in mind since this is ultimately gonna be up to you. I mean, you are after all the Jeremy Lin of how thin but as I said, I like to shoot for about an eighth of an inch or less, which is what I believe I have right about here. All right, so that's looking good. And once that step's been accomplished, what we'll do is take our oil flour mixture and paint the entire surface, except I like to leave about an inch unoiled all the way around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. And by the way, we just want to brush on enough to cover. All right, we don't want puddles of oil on this. So be thorough, but not excessive. And then once that's set, we will proceed to scatter our scallions being fairly generous. And no, I didn't measure how much I put down, sorry. That amount in the ingredients will be listed as needed. Oh, and I should mention if you were gonna sneak in something like red pepper flakes or other embellishment, this is when you wanna sprinkle that over. 
And then what we'll do once our dough's been green onioned is start rolling up this dough as shown. And we want to do this pretty tightly so we don't get a lot of big air bubbles. And having said that, we are going to end up with hundreds of little bubbles, which are fine. We just don't want to intentionally trap large bubbles of air while we do this rolling step. And thanks to this rolling, along with our oil and flour mixture, this is what's going to create all those layers you're going to see in the final pancake. And I'm not sure how well you can see it, but as we roll this closer to the opposite edge, what I like to do is start pulling the dough just a hair, sort of tug it back a little bit as I roll, to keep everything nice and tight and our dough thin. And then what we'll do once we've rolled to this point is stop and take the excess dough and sort of stretch it over the top. And of course, if any of those green onions try to escape, you just stick them right back in. And then once we've gone along the length, making sure that's sealed and not sticking to the table, what we need to do is coil this up. All right, so just start at one end and sort of wind it up towards the middle. And normally what I'll do is roll it about halfway up and then go ahead and grab the remainder of the dough and finish that coil by wrapping it around like this. And then yes, we are gonna tuck any excess underneath. All right, you saw that coming. And once that coil has been formed, we are almost done. All we have left to do is dust this with flour and then attempt to roll it out into about a quarter inch thickness. And of all the various things I've rolled in my life, and I should specify in regards to dough, this is probably the most fun thing to roll out because of all those trapped air bubbles in there. I can't explain it, you're just gonna have to experience it. But there's just something about rolling this dough out that's strangely satisfying. I guess a good analogy would be popping bubble wrap. Which reminds me, as you roll this, yes, you are gonna press out a lot of that air. But that's fine. Thanks to us applying that oil flour mixture before we rolled it, all those layers have already been formed. But anyway, like I said, we'll go ahead and roll that out to about a quarter inch thick. And if a couple of those scallions happen to break through the surface, no big deal. You could just pick them off or leave them there. Really doesn't matter. And then once our pancake has been successfully rolled out, we are ready to head over to the stove to cook this. Which I'm going to do in a nice hot cast iron pan, into which I drizzled a couple tablespoons of oil. And what I generally like to do here is start on high heat to get the pan hot. And then once we carefully place in our pancake, I'll back the heat down to medium and cook this for about four minutes per side. Which is why you have to monitor your heat. Alright, we don't want the outside turning black before the inside cooks through. So if you have to adjust your heat a little bit, feel free. That is just you cooking. So anyway, I gave my first side about four minutes and flipped it over, and then gave the other side about the same. And what's kind of interesting here is one side generally will have sort of a uniform browning, but then the other side will have a lot more contrast, and you'll actually be able to see those coils. And I'm never sure which side looks better for presentation. But anyway, that's it. After about four minutes per side, we'll go ahead and remove that to our cutting board. And then before I grab a cleaver and chop this up, let me go ahead and grab a fork and make sure this sounds okay. Oh yeah, that sounds just about perfect. So let me go ahead and cut this up and we'll take a look inside to see what's going on. And as you can hopefully see, thanks to the oil and all that rolling, we've created all this beautiful layering. And it's the contrast between that moist, layered, oniony center and that crispy, crusty outside, which really is the magic behind the Chinese scallion pancake. And while this is tasty enough to eat as is, I'm gonna go ahead and serve up a few slices next to a dipping sauce. And by the way, since I showed the one side when we cut it, let me go ahead and feature the other side in this plated presentation. And I'll proceed to enjoy a few more slices with this dipping sauce, which is pretty much just rice vinegar and soy sauce, and a few other things. But I'll give you that recipe on the blog post, so don't worry. And not surprisingly, since we're talking about a fried dough, but that little bit of acidity and salt really does amplify all the flavors. But anyway, that's it. My take on Chinese scallion pancakes, which we've done to honor Chinese New Year, which if you're watching in real time is tonight. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, it's the year of the manatee. Or is it the year of the squirrel? I forget. But regardless of what year it is, I really do hope you give this fabulous and very fun to make flatbread a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.